Afternoon all. And uh, this afternoon I've been trying to fix my fruit machine, which hasn't been working for, well, years and years and years. Um, I took it to a, a casino-themed party one night, and uh, although it worked all the way through the night, it just packed up right at the end. Well, I think I found the problem, and it's this chip here, which is a 7556, and that's a dual 7555, so that's a dual timer, the one that I took out, that one appears to be Duff. So what this chip does is the first half is in, uh, what is it, a stable mode, so free running mode, and it generates um, a pulse chain. Now it's supposed to be 50 hertz, but it's actually being measured here on the scope as 80 hertz, so it's a little out of spec because uh, this is intended to drive a servo motor. Now the servo motor is down in here. It's a very old Futaba uh, servo motor. And what that does, now it's not going to move because the pulse chain is actually working now. So what I need to do is short out this link, this pair of pins here. So I'll short that out. And then you can see, if I can do it, yeah. The servo motor moves the coin slide from the coin collect position to the coin eject position. So that's working fine now. So the way this works is that coins collect in this tube. They stack up in the tube and then uh, the machine, when it wants to pay coins out, moves the servo motor backwards and forwards and the coins drop out from the bottom thing there. So I've clocked up a few credits. They're indicated on those yellow LEDs, but you probably won't see anything because it's quite light in here, but let's play. So the reels spin. That's very difficult to see at the moment. Let's see if I can get a win. Now I've managed to get a, a win, which is, well, it's not a win yet. It's LLA. Actually, it is a win. Yes, the first two fruits are the same. So that's lemon, lemon, apple. And I've also got holds flashing. So I've held the first two reels. So if I spin, then I will definitely get a win. So let's do that and then watch the servo move. So that's a win where it pays out two coins and the coins are 5p pieces. So that's a 10p win. Now back to this pulse train. This is uh, positive going pulses at a frequency of 50 hertz, that's what it's meant to be. As I say, that's showing 80 hertz. And you can see that the width there is showing two milliseconds. And the spec for a servo motor is between one millisecond for the motor at one end of the tra travel and two milliseconds for the other. So if I now short that link, which is a setting up link, you can see that the width of the pulse drops to uh, 1.1 uh, milliseconds. And then when I release, two milliseconds. And you can hear the servo moving from one extent to the other. The frequency doesn't change. That remains at, well, 80 hertz in this case. Should be 50. But the pulse width is what alters. And that's what the servo is responding to. So if I show the servo when I do this, let's try and get the link in as well. When I make the link, it moves from to one end. When I break the link, it moves to the other. So here's the circuit diagram for this part of the circuit. And uh, this is the first half of the 7556. And that's a free running, uh, A-stable multi-vibrator, they call it, running at uh, theoretically 50 hertz, but the servo seems very tolerant of um, a, a different frequency there. Now here's a differentiator, a capacitor resistor, with the diode to prevent overshoot uh, where it's not wanted. And that triggers the second half of the 7556, which is configured as a monostable, so that's a pulse width generator. And there are two resistor chains, one here and one here, both with adjustable pots. And then the second resistor chain is brought into uh, effect by this transistor when the output of the PIC microcontroller goes, whatever it is, high, I suppose. This will turn on, uh, bring in this second resistor chain to go in parallel with the first one. And that's what produces the two different pulse widths. 
and then you set the endpoints of the servo movement by adjusting these two potentiometers. Now I should replace this dual inline socket really because uh, it was a plastic one with these sort of leaf spring contacts and I ripped the plastic away so now the chips just sort of perched in there rather hmm, what would you say not very securely so I do need to replace that I'll put a proper turned pin uh, socket in there but uh, I'm gonna put this thing back together because it's quite fun to watch it in operation so here's the unit mostly back together now the coins uh, 5p coins in this case drop through this uh, coin slide mechanism at the top and uh, I can't do it at the moment. It's a simple brake beam uh, detector. It's got a photo transistor, I think, and a LED, and it breaks the beam. And the software measures the time that the beam is broken to try and determine whether washers or whatever are being put in there or, or proper coins. The coin then drops down into the tube and they stack up ready to be uh, dispensed by the slide mechanism, which is attached to the servo. Um, there's a piezo crystal uh, earpiece in there or speaker to make the clicking sounds of the reels spinning. Uh, that's about it at the moment. I'll just um, put the coin slide back in so that when the coins are ejected they come out of the front of the machine. Uh, so this is the coin slide. It just sits there at 45 degrees and redirects the coins to the front and then the back of the machine goes on there like that. So let's see if it works. Uh, switch on, bar, bar, bar. Now I'll put a few coins in to clock up a few credits. So the credits are shown on those yellow lights. Each coin I put in clocks up one credit. And then play. A, P, P. There we go. Bar, O, bar. Hmm, no hold on that one, that's a shame. Otherwise I'd have held the two bars. Because bar, bar, bar is the jackpot, one pound. Ah, there's a win. Oh, it's a good win. Now when you get a three fruit win, you get, uh, sometimes you get a gamble option. So I can either collect the win, which is AAA, 50p. <laughs> there isn't 50p in there, so it won't pay that out. So let's gamble and see if I can lose money. Let's press the... So it's gone down to LLL, 40p. And now it's trying to pay out and there's nothing in there. It would have paid out 40p if the coins had been in the chute. So that's good, that's the machine fixed after many years sitting there in a broken state on the shelf. Never got around to fixing it. So I'm quite pleased it's now fixed. Nothing worth holding there, so play on. P dash A. Looks like I'm on a losing streak. RPL. So uh, this fruit machine project has pride of place on my workshop wall. There it is featured on the front cover of Every Day with Practical Electronics. Uh, December 1994, I guess that qualifies as uh, retro electronics. Now this was a joint project, um, my buddy Brett and myself when I used to spell my name with a Y. We called it the EPE fruit machine for everyday practical electronics. So what else we got in this article? Uh, here's a mechanical analogy of the uh, characters flowing through the display as though they're on a, a wheel. Um, here's a flow chart, which is a, a state machine really, showing all the states the different states that the machine can be in, um, lots of text, circuit diagram, and uh, also the circuit board uh, copper pattern, and the component positions diagram. And then in part two, we have 
yes, all of the sort of cutting diagrams for making the plastic parts for building the uh, coin detector device and also the coin payout mechanism. And there were quite a lot of diagrams showing how to cut all the various pieces of plastic, uh, including the pipe and even the little wire link that links to the coin slide. A little diagram here showing those uh, pulses, the one millisecond pulses and the two millisecond pulses that go to the servo. Uh, yet more diagrams for cutting all the holes in the front of the box for the displays and the switches. And then some diagrams for wiring up the battery box, uh, the on off switch, the servo, the brake beam detector with the uh, LED and the phototransistor and the little piezo sounder. Now there had been a few uh, fruit machine projects in electronics magazines, but not many, probably two or three. And uh, none of them, or all of them were simulations, none of them actually had a coin mechanism. So uh, none of them handled real coins. And that's what we were very keen to do, to, to build a fruit machine uh, project, which actually chucked out real coins. So I've put the last coin in the machine now and I have one credit remaining. Let's see if I can bag a win. Ah, house always wins.